My name is Marcus, and I'd like to welcome you to Dempsiso Tech. I'm thrilled to be able to share my interests, experiences, and knowledge with you through my videos. If you've spent any time on YouTube, I'm sure you've gone through Keylogger tutorials, Kali Linux tutorials, and Password Cracker tutorials. The thing is, if you don't have the foundation of what cybersecurity is, this is mostly just theater, and you're probably wasting your time because you don't understand the underlying fundamentals to be able to go and apply these techniques in really any situation. A successful cybersecurity strategy includes multiple layers of protection spread across computers, networks, applications, and data. To successfully defend against these attacks, you must have all of these in place. What are the three primary objectives of cybersecurity? All of cybersecurity seeks to protect against malicious actors from three things, which are known as the CIA triad, and if you can understand these three things, you'll have a really good idea of what exactly the cybersecurity field is. The first is confidentiality, which means not allowing people access to your data or seeing really important data. The second is integrity, which means is the data actually correct, or did someone go in and change that data for their own purposes? This would be a violation of integrity. The third crucial factor, and one that is frequently overlooked, is availability. Our resources are available when you need them. For example, when your home internet goes down, you can't access the internet, and many layers are put in place to protect these three things. The multi-layer approach to cybersecurity will include the rest of this video. The first really important one, and I put it here first because it's often overlooked, is governance risk and compliance, and it sounds so boring. I get it, but essentially, GRC, or governance, risk, and compliance, in cybersecurity is the set of processes and policies that organizations put in place to manage their exposure to risk. Governance is the process of making decisions about how to protect your computer systems and data from security threats. This is typically done at the C-suite level, but it is common to involve other members of the team, including frontline employees, in order to make better decisions. Risk assessments are usually done to figure out what the threats are and how vulnerable they are to risk. This leads to risk management, which is the process of identifying, assessing, and reducing risks. This includes how likely it is that a threat will happen and how it will affect business operations. Many people believe that it is simply a technical matter and that if you can put up that firewall, you should, but you must always conduct a cost-benefit analysis. If that firewall is actually more expensive than the potential impact of that threat, there's no point in putting it up, and that's how the C-suite management sees it. Is it going to be worth my money in the long run? There are various risk management options available. The NIST cybersecurity framework is the most common framework used by businesses. It offers a complete approach to cybersecurity that includes finding, protecting, detecting, responding to, and recovering from incidents. The third component that makes people who work in cybersecurity cringe is compliance, and compliance is very important, especially if you want to stay in business. Compliance basically means following security protocols and procedures to keep information systems safe. There are many compliance organizations, and it will depend on the industry you work in. Each one has its own set of operating system requirements. Theft of confidential data can hurt national security or your company's ability to stay in business, since competitors can use that information to their advantage. It's relatively sophisticated, so you're not going to get script kittens, which are just people messing around with random scripts, and it can be extremely difficult to defend against. The next really common network attack is IP spoofing, which is just like your computer's home address. It's a hacking method used to get into a computer system without permission. The hackers hide their real IP address. In general, host and endpoint security is the next most important part of cybersecurity. This refers to the steps that are taken to protect the computers and hosts that make up the network. When data flows from one computer to another on the network, your computer still needs to be protected by antivirus software. If a device is connected to the network, it is considered an endpoint. The problem with this is that with the bring your own device movement, these are often also required to be protected. The endpoints can certainly reach hundreds, if not thousands, making it more difficult for them to be protected. To do their jobs, network infrastructure hosts and endpoint detection people use laptops, 
printers, smartphones, and other devices. One thing that can be done to protect endpoints is to use machine learning classification to find zero-day threats. Advanced antivirus protection to defend against and remove malware proactive web security to make sure employees can browse the web safely and email gateways to stop phishing and social engineering. For example, when the ABC Corporation had a data breach that made sensitive information about millions of customers public, it was found that the breach was caused by a lack of endpoint security and not protecting their data properly. ABC made themselves vulnerable to attack, compromising their customer data and tarnishing their reputation. Since then, they have implemented endpoint security, but the damage has already been done. The next critical aspect of cybersecurity and defense is data protection and encryption. Data is the lifeblood of many corporations, and many people have stated that it is the new currency. It's important to keep that data safe because it's the lifeblood of your company and probably a lot of its employees. Secrets National Secrets data must be kept secure, whether it is sensitive personal information, financial records, or medical records. This is why different security controls or measures are put in place to protect against different risks. One way is to use encryption, which is the process of turning readable data into a format that can't be read without a key. Another method is user behavior analysis, which is the process of understanding how users interact with a particular system or service, and you can actually set up rules saying if they open this file and do this, they're not allowed to open this file. Hackers looked at birth dates, which is against the rules, and it turned out that this was because of a simple web vulnerability. If you want to know more, you can look at OAS Top 10, but basically they didn't encrypt their database, which meant that customer information wasn't safe. As a result, they had to pay $700 million in fines and damages and lose their good name. Network application, and this can help you investigate any potential security breaches, as well as track down any source of any malicious or unauthorized activity, which is why you don't hear about breaches the day that they happen. Sometimes it takes them six or seven months to even find out that they had a breach. Also, these logs can be used in court later, and monitoring them involves looking at the activity in real time to find possible threats. Throughout my career, I have examined numerous logs for false positives. It's not glamorous, but it's necessary. Threat detection and analytics employ data to forecast and protect against future threats. It finds weaknesses before hackers can use them, and monitoring the logs protects your system. Attack Anthem had an 8 million person data leak in 2015. Hackers had access to the system for four months because the company didn't keep track of what users did. Millions of victims had their social security numbers and medical records taken. Identity Access Management, EAM, often disregarded in cybersecurity, is next. Depending on who you are and what level of access you have, identity and access management controls let you get to resources or keep you from doing so. Preventing data and system breaches, which are prevalent, is crucial. IAM Solutions offers two-factor authentication and authorization. In the early days, many computers and corporations did not install identity and access management controls, which led to many different assaults through a range of IAM solutions, including directory services like Active Directory and privilege management tools like Beyond Trust Power Broker or Centrify. Tools for managing passwords, such as LastPass, and solutions for single sign-on, such as Okta or OneLogin, can be helpful. An example of this happening was in 2017, when a hacker was able to gain access to the email accounts of several executives at HBO using stolen passwords. If HBO had used two-factor authentication, the hacker would not have been able to get in. However, there are still ways, through phishing attacks, for a hacker to clone your web browser if you click on one of those links. This is the process of looking at a system's configuration files and settings to find security risks. Vulnerability analysis is the process of finding potential security holes in systems and applications and looking into them. Together, these processes help organizations identify and mitigate risks to their computer systems. Scanning tools can often find really common vulnerabilities. When configuration and vulnerability analysis is done on a regular basis, it is often necessary to do a manual review to find threats that aren't common, such as zero-day threats. 
Organizations can frequently protect their systems from attack and compromise by identifying these vulnerabilities. This is where the ethical hacker comes in as a penetration tester. You're essentially trying to find vulnerabilities in systems so that the blue team can go in and fix them. It protects against that vulnerability being exploited. A recent example of this is when an attacker broke into a target by using a weakness in the HVAC system. Remember, HVAC is an endpoint because if it's connected to the network, if you can get into that network at just one single point, you can then pivot and do lateral movement into other parts of the network. Letting the attacker get into the company's network and steal credit card information worth millions of dollars. I've had a checklist where I went and checked to see if all of those security settings were in place. This is also known as an auditor. I've also been on the other side of that. I fixed the problems that the auditor found. These configuration checklists can be found at NIST. It really just depends on the system. If you work in the DOT, you can assess the security of your various hosts by using some essentially benchmarks for a variety of systems and applications. The next critical aspect of cybersecurity is application security. If you don't know what an application is, it's basically a program that's been installed on a device to give it more features. Applications are classified into two types, user applications and sister system applications. Some examples are given. Chrome by Google Apple's iTunes Store Adobe backslash S Photoshop Microsoft Outlook, as you might expect, has vulnerabilities that could have a negative impact. Vulnerabilities in web applications, the OWASP Top 10 is an excellent resource that covers the most common issues. Insecure coding processes are another common vulnerability in application security. Poor coding practices can expose your device to hacker attacks, so it's critical to use secure coding practices while developing. According to my developer friends, security isn't on the minds of the majority of companies, especially those at the startup level. I have a friend who works at a startup where the founder is also the chief information security officer. An example of this gone wrong is Ashley Madison, which had a website that allowed users to engage in extramarital affairs back in 2015. Hackers assessed the site's user database and released the information online. This private information, which included their email addresses and passwords, caused many people to have marital problems. They were later sued for $578 million. The next important part of cybersecurity is security operations and automation, which isn't required but will involve automating some tasks that are currently done by hand to make them more efficient. If you've ever done really menial work, automation is a godsend. This can include monitoring networks for malicious activity and identifying and responding to threats through automation. Organizations can reduce the time spent on manual labor, and then employees can do more high-level work, so I'm really excited for this to happen. I have high hopes that AI will be able to do all of these jobs in 5 to 10 years, which isn't to say that AI will take all of the jobs because it won't, but AI can probably do it better than a human being and doesn't complain about looking at logs for 8 hours a day. I included it because I believe it will be useful in the future. Automation is the next step in cybersecurity. I hope you enjoyed this brief overview of cybersecurity. Although this video is a little lengthy, I have a course below that will go more in depth into various cybersecurity topics. Check out the description below and all of my other videos if you're interested in starting your career in cybersecurity, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.